Hello and welcome. I'm Elizabeth, a librarian with the San Jose Public Library, and today we're going to be making the mathematical toy hexaflexagon. A hexaflexagon is a strip of paper that has been folded back on itself to produce a toy that has not just one or two sides like the red and blue sides you see here, but if I bring together three points and unfold it, a third side. So how can a piece of paper have three sides instead of just two? Well, let's explore and find out. For today's activity, you're going to need a sheet of paper. You can print out a template for a hexaflexagon. I'll provide a link in the description box below that gives you a one or two layered hexaflexagon. But we're going to be using just a plain sheet of paper and I'll show you how to calculate it yourself. You'll also need scissors, glue stick or tape, and optionally some pencils, crayons, or markers to decorate with. We'll begin by cutting a strip of paper from the long edge of our sheet of paper. I'm making a fairly narrow strip, about three quarters of an inch wide. You can make a wider strip if you want a larger hexaflexagon, but you may need to cut a second strip of paper because the wider your strip, the longer it will need to be. You can join two strips end to end to make a longer strip of paper. I'm actually going to cut a second strip myself, but I'm going to use that to talk about the Mobius strip before we start on our hexaflexagon. You may have seen a Mobius strip before. You take a strip of paper with two sides, just a normal piece of paper. You bring the ends together, but you give the, one of the ends a little half twist before you tape the two ends together. This half twist has a very curious property because now our strip of paper, instead of having a front and a back, or in the case of a ring of paper, an inside and an outside, now has only one surface. So introducing one half twist means that our Mobius strip has just one surface instead of two. It no longer has a front and a back. And you can see this by taking a pencil and drawing a line down the center of your Mobius circle. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to start our join and I'm going to just draw a line down the center of the ring. Now I keep drawing and turning it in my hand and continuing the line and as I keep moving I come around to my join again but I'm not seeing the other side of the piece of paper. So I continue on and on my second go around of the ring I finally come to the join one more time and I see the other end of my line. So you can see now even though I didn't really move the pencil from the paper I now have a line on both sides of the piece of paper showing that actually there is only now one side to this ring of paper. And I can see this even more clearly because whereas normally if I cut my strip of paper in half, I would have two single strips of paper, or if I cut a ring of paper in half, I would have two smaller rings of paper. However, if I cut my Mobius strip in half, I'll find that in fact, I don't have two pieces of paper, I have just one. Now, it gained an extra half twist on its way of being cut, but I have now just one ring of paper, and that's what makes the Mobius strip pretty interesting. Now let's get started with our hexaflexagon. We're going to take our other strip of paper, and just as it shows on this template here, we're going to fold the strip of paper into nine or 10 equilateral triangles. An equilateral triangle is one that has sides of all the exact same length. But I'm not going to use a ruler to do this. I'm going to use the fact that if it has sides of the same length, it will also have angles of the same length on its internal corners. So I'm going to do this by taking my strip of paper and I'm going to start in the middle and fold a V. Now I'm hoping that the V on the inside here will actually be 60 degrees in angle. And how am I going to test that? Well, I'm going to fold over the strip of paper again, lining the fold up carefully with the side of the strip of paper underneath it. And then I'm going to check the back side to make sure that the side and the fold line up perfectly. They do, so I'm going to keep folding and lining up my fold and the folds or creases underneath it perfectly until I have all nine or ten triangles.
once I have my piece of paper entirely folded up, I'm going to unfold it and now we have our strip of equilateral triangles. I'm going to count out 10 triangles and then I'm going to trim the edges of the strip of paper to remove the extra triangles. Next, holding the strip of paper, I'm going to count down three triangles, and then I'm going to fold the paper over the third triangle, just like so. And then I rotate and count out three triangles again and fold over that third triangle. Now I'm back at the beginning. Now to make my loop, I'm going to bring the beginning up and over so that the beginning of our loop now sits on top of the end. Now I have my 10th triangle here and if I was going to secure it with tape, I would cut off the 10th triangle and tape the edge. However, I'm going to use glue. I don't like using tape for the hexaflexagons because it will leave a little gap like this one here and I think glue works better. So I always cut that 10th triangle and with the top of the strip of paper here, and then I'm gonna fold over the triangle so that it completes the loop. Kind of sandwiching what had been the top of our strip of paper between the last two triangles on the end of our strip of paper. So how do you know you have a good hexaflexagon? Well, I've labeled the sides one and two here. And one of the ways that I can tell I have a good hexaflexagon is that I can see that there's a parallelogram for every loop of paper. So I can sort of slide my thumb into these loops of paper and trace the parallelogram on each of them. And now we're ready to flex our hexaflexagon. So the points that have the little flappy parts where I put my finger in before to show you the loop, I'm gonna bring all three of those up, pinch them together, and then turn over my hexaflexagon and pull apart the three points on the bottom side. And there it is, my third side ready for labeling or decoration or whatever else you would like to do. So how did we get three sides on our hexaflexagon? Well, if we think back to our Mobius strip, it works kind of the same way. Our Mobius strip, we put in one half turn in order to get one side. Here with our hexaflexagon, we put in three half turns and got three sides. The mathematical study of how objects in space can be changed through bending, stretching, or folding is called topology. If you're interested in more about flexagons or topology, I've put some links in the description box below. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this activity, please fill out the program survey in the description box below. Have a great day and keep flexing.